All right, ladies and gentlemen, we were working on a 2015 Subaru WRX STI. Has Brembo brakes on the front and Brembo brakes on the rear. But uh, first thing we got to do to, uh, we're actually going to be changing out the brake pads on this thing. Uh, first thing we need to do is loosen up the lug nuts while it's on the ground still. Because if uh, you raise it up first, it will not, uh, it will not, um, it'll just spin, the tire will just spin and then you won't be able to get the wheel off. So first thing we need to do, he has a special uh, lug nuts on here, so we need a special key. So let's go ahead and loosen up all those. All right, now that all the lug nuts are loose, we'll go ahead and raise it up and get the wheel off. Okay, we have the wheel off. So next thing you want to do is come up here, right? So we've already done this, but one thing you want to do is take off the cap for the reservoir, the brake reservoir. Reason being is that we're going to have to push the pistons back into the calipers, and when that happens, fluid is actually going to come from the bottom back up because the lines are full of brake fluid. And uh, sometimes I've seen it where guys overfill these and brake fluid comes up and presses up against the cap and blows the seal out on the cap. So I just put this rag over here to get you any brake fluid if that happens. But yeah, remove the cap. But just don't forget to put it back on when you guys are done. We're actually just swapping pads. We're not doing the rotors. If you want to do the rotors, there's, looks like there's two brake caliper bolts back here, maybe a 17. You have to pop those loose. There's one here and one here. You take those, one at the very bottom, one at the very top. You take those loose and you'll be able to slide this whole caliper off, giving you access to the rotor. But we're just doing the, uh, we're just doing brake pad swap. First thing you want to do, you don't want to breathe this brake dust. It's nasty stuff. So first thing you want to do is just to get some park brake parts cleaner, spray this all off. If I can do this right. Just depending on where you're working, put a piece of uh, cardboard down to catch all this um, brake dust, because it will leave a mess wherever you're working at. So you have a pin right here and a pin right here. You have to take these off to get this clip out in the spring. Then you have two pin. You have a pin right here and a pin right here. This is more like a uh, clevis pin that we're going to be pulling out. So depending on how tough it is, you might either. I'm using a pair of needle nose pliers, or you might need to get a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and get it from behind and just pull it up. The clips are exactly the same, so don't worry about messing them up. Okay. Next thing we'll do, we're going to push the pin out. They go from, they go, they start here, they end here, and they go that way. So you're pushing towards the inside of the car. I have a little um, punch that I'm going to use. You just line this up right here. And get yourself a hammer. And just tap it out. Okay. So <clears throat> one thing to note, you'll see right here, there's a hole in the pin where the clevis pins went into. When you reinstall them, make sure that these holes are facing out this way towards you so that you can put the pin back in. Because if this is facing like up and down, you're not gonna be able to get the pin in that you need to. So when you install it, make sure you put it in the correct way. So to get, make it a little bit easier, I'm just taking on the spring right here, just using my finger, pushing it down, pulling the, pulling the pin out. The new kit comes with new springs, or new spring, yeah, new springs. We've already done the passenger side, this is the driver's side. They're exactly the same, so I'm just gonna be showing you one side. This job is not hard at all. Brimbo brakes are probably the easiest to work on. And this lower pin comes right out. Okay, next thing you wanna do, so these pins, the um, brake pads slide on this, so you wanna clean this up as best as possible. And I put a little bit of a uh, silicone on it just to make it easier to slide back and forth so once again get your uh, brake parts cleaner this bottle's done but just clean up as well as you can the pins are clean next thing we're going to do we're going to before we remove the old pads we're actually going to push the pistons back into place how we're going to do that we're going to take a screwdriver flathead screwdriver we're going to put it between the pad and the rotor this is just take some time to get in there. And once you get access in there, you just start pushing it. Now you'll see, you just start angling it back. I 
I'm just going to angle, push them back. You have to do this on both sides. You'll never get the old pads out if you don't do this, and you'll never get the new ones in if you don't do this either. There's the old pad. See how thin and worn that out, out that is? Only thing we're going to reuse, so you have you have like an anti-squeak pad right here on the brake pad. The new ones come with this, but they didn't come with this part. So we're going to swap over this, this little pad right here. What I like to do is for the inside brake pad, I'll put it on the inside of the car. And when I pull out the outside brake pad, I'll keep it over here so that, that way I know which ones are which. And that way I can determine which pad goes where. Some guys say to open up the brake bleeder screw, which is right here on top, but you don't need to do all that. You don't want to open up the system, the hydraulic system, if you don't have to. The only reason I would open this, this screw up is if I was changing out this caliper. So I do one side and the other side pushes back out. So what I'm going to do is get one of the new pads that's thicker and stick it in there to keep it in place. So see, here's a new pad. You can see that material, how much thicker it is. Put the uh, new brake pad in to just keep keep the uh, piston from coming out. Pop this old one out. And once again, you have two pads. I'm just gonna be using this one. Pull this out. All right, one thing you wanna be very careful of is this surface right here. This is a new brake pad. This is a new surface area right here. You do not wanna touch this. You don't wanna put grease on it. Get your dirty paws on it. Do anything that puts any kind of contaminants on it. I saw this one video on YouTube and I was just cringing when I watched it. Guys are doing a job on this same car, this same brake system, and they had touched this all full of nasty fingerprints and there were guys that obviously didn't know what they were doing. So don't touch this. All right, now we're gonna spray off the pads or the backing plate here a little bit. Get that cleaned up. some brake cleaner just use a rag clean it up I've seen where guys will uh, take grease and put it on the new pads I never do that it didn't come from factory that way so why would you do it guys claim it helps with squeaking and noise but if you need to do that there's you're doing something wrong or you're using really cheap brake pads doesn't need to be perfect just clean up as well as you can There's a clean one, there's a, what I'm gonna do. All right, so we got our pads, our, our backing plate clean. Just keep them separated as far as which goes where. I'm gonna put, this one goes on the front or the outer. Put this onto the pad right here. Don't touch the surface. Slide that into place. Can I leave it right there for a second? Got our next brake pad. Put the backing plate into place. Don't touch this surface. And don't install these backwards. I've seen where guys will actually put the brake pad material facing outward and not towards the rotor. Doesn't like that at all. I didn't push the piston in far enough. So just put an old pad back in. I'm just trying to get more, get the pistons to go back in farther. <laughs> there we go, just had to get the piston in farther. All right. So that these pins are cleaned up a little bit, I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, silicone on them to help uh, the, the pads slide along them. Just a matter of lining everything up and then making sure that your hole is facing out right here, right? Then we bring our clip, our spring. Bring in our other pin. Gotta line everything up again. First, the, through the first brake pad, bring our clip down. 
You can always push on the clip to make it a little bit easier. Going through our second pad. I think we're there. Yep, we're there. We sure our hole is facing out, which it is. Also, don't forget to put the cap back onto the brick reservoir bottle, because uh, if you don't do that and you go to push your brake, uh, you're gonna have brake fluid spill everywhere, go shooting everywhere under your hood. So put the cap back onto the brake reservoir bottle, and then go inside and uh, push the brake pedal 10 times before you put the wheels back on, because you need to have the uh, new pads make contact with the rotors, so that you actually have brakes when you go off and try to brake for the first time. So press that brake pedal 10 times before uh, before driving. Got our clevis pin. Go ahead, bring that into place. Push that down, make sure that's secure. And do the same exact thing right there on top. All right, that's how you change brake pads on a 2015 WR or Subaru WRX STI. We did this on the driver's side, the passenger side is exactly the same. I'm not gonna show you that. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence, but there you go, guys. I'm not gonna show you how to put the wheel back on. I'm gonna torque the lug nuts down to 80 foot pounds. You, you guys can put the wheel on. If you can do this, you guys put the wheel on it. You don't need to, I don't need to show you how to do that. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to Bunny's Garage on YouTube. Questions, comments, concerns, you can reach out to me at bunniesgarage at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter. And like always, I'll keep them rolling for you.